What's up, YouTube? This is Mathos1987, and welcome back to my SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 General Manager Mode. We are here in Helena, Montana for the November 11th edition of Raw. And today's episode, we are going to be showcasing JBL versus Mr. Kennedy. That's right. The team has imploded, and they are going to face off to kickstart that rivalry. We've also got Kane taking on Johnny Nitro in singles action. Edge and Finley taking on Eddie Guerrero and Carlito in tag team action. Mick Foley takes on John Cena with Kurt Angle at ringside. And in the main event, Undertaker and Batista team up to take on D-Generation X. So let's get into our JBL versus Mr. Kennedy matchup. It's a grudge match between former tag team partners. It is John Bradshaw Layfield taking on Mr. Ken Kennedy. The question is who is gonna come out on top in this situation? Of course, these two men recently receiving a shot at Eminem's World Tag Team titles, albeit they were unsuccessful in capturing the gold. I guess the question, oh, seems as though that loss has, it has caused a rift between the two men, and the question now is, who who was the weak link in that alliance? Who is going to move on to bigger and better things? And who could find themselves on a fast track to SmackDown? We'll have to see. I'm not sure if I really have a preference with who I would like to win this feud. Uh, obviously, I think the loser should be traded over to SmackDown. Um, I don't necessarily... That doesn't necessarily mean that the loser of this match is going to be going over to SmackDown. But I think at some point this rivalry will conclude in some sort of loser leaves the brand match. I think that would be I think that would be a good idea, a good a good place to to start. As Kennedy went for the boot, but JBL able to catch it. And now JBL looking to utilize his strength advantage as he takes Kennedy takes Kennedy down with a swinging neckbreaker. But I don't know if I really have a preference on who I would like to win because Kennedy, he will be in SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 and he will be within my popularity range for superstars I could draft. So I could see him potentially being uh, one, of my top, one of my top superstars on whichever brand I choose. As for which brand I choose, I still haven't really decided. Um, I might try to do ECW again just because obviously 2006 and 7 don't have ECW. Uh, but I also kind of want to do SmackDown, because that would give me... Well, either that, or I could do Raw and draft women, depending on how big my selection of superstars is. Fall away slam to the outside by JBL! Good lord, that'll change the complexion of this matchup. But, like, SmackDown and Raw would give me more championships, and I think since I'm already starting at a disadvantage with superstar popularity, it might be in my best interest to start with a more capable brand like Raw or SmackDown. As right now, Mr. Kennedy trying to make the comeback, but JBL with the counter. And now JBL with the bear hug, really targeting the rib cage of Mr. Kennedy here in this matchup. And just look at this. After that follow slam to the outside, you have to imagine that Mr. Kennedy is in bad shape right now. His midsection, his ribs were completely destroyed off of that follow slam. And JBL could be looking to make quick work of his former tag team partner. As Kennedy is down, but is he out right now? No, Kennedy with a boot to the midsection. Here comes Mr. Kennedy. As there's a kick to the midsection and another one. Mr. Kennedy looking to return the favor with a backbreaker. Or a gut buster. One of the two. And now Kennedy to the top rope. Elbow, no, it was blocked. JBL able to reverse it. Oh, and now, come on, referee. How is that not a low blow? How is that not a disqualification? As JBL continues to target the ribs of Mr. Kennedy. And now JBL could be looking to finish him off. JBL has got him up. Powerbomb. A massive powerbomb by JBL. And he's looking to make quick work of Mr. Kennedy in this matchup as he goes for the pin. One, two, three. Three, no, Kennedy able to kick out. Mr. Kennedy still got fight left in him. 
And JBL, this is the part where he's going to have to try to keep his emotions in check. Not get too overly frustrated. As now a submission hold is applied. Kennedy, trapped in the center of the ring. JBL dealing critical damage to Mr. Kennedy in this matchup. And I really think that follow a slam really put Kennedy at a disadvantage. But Kennedy's still trying to fight. Kennedy ducks behind. And now look at this, abdominal stretch. Kennedy returning the favor, targeting the ribs of JBL. As JBL crumbles to the canvas, Mr. Kennedy looking to take a risk once again. Look out below, nobody missed, he overshot him. Kennedy overshot JBL and JBL nearly took his head off with a clothesline. Not quite a clothesline from hell and now look at JBL. JBL just mocking Kennedy with these boots to the face. Is now JBL again going to go back to that submission. Again wearing down the legs, the back of Kennedy. But Kennedy able to, able to escape it fairly quickly. Oh, what a kick to the face. What a kick to the skull by Kennedy. And now Kennedy on the comeback. No, counter by JBL. I now JBL with a sleeper hold. JBL has the sleeper hold locked in. Just able to disorient Mr. Kennedy. And now shoulder blocks taking, taking Kennedy back down. As JBL now drops a knee. Kennedy back to his feet. Oh my God, out of nowhere. Clothesline from hell and that'll do it. He just knocked Kennedy's lights out. It's over, folks. And in dominant fashion, JBL disposes of his former tag team partner, Mr. Kennedy. Really, it was, it was that follow a slam that made the difference. Kennedy dumped to the outside. Who knows, he might have broken a rib off of that move. I mean, this matchup was barely even a contest. JBL made quick work of the former Intercontinental Champion. And what does this mean for the future of JBL on Monday Night Raw? I guess we'll have to, you'll have to stick around to find out. All right, so let's see how the rest of the card did. Johnny Nitro scored the win over Kane, which is good. That's what I wanted. Edge and Finley defeated Eddie Guerrero and Carlito. John Cena with Kurt Angle defeated Mick Foley. And DX defeated Batista and The Undertaker. So let's see, how did we do? It seems as though, yeah. Oh crap, my controller's goofing again. Oh no, wait, we gained 20,000, nice. Usually SmackDown Superstars appear on Raw. Yeah, that was definitely not the case. The Rock showed up on Raw, sprinted into the arena during a match, and started to pick a fight with one of the show's superstars. This may just be the spark that ignites the, ignites the fire. Well, it seems as though it may have, Stop it, controller. It seems as though it may have backfired on them a bit because we pulled out with a win this week. Apparently the Rock's main event was good. Good for him, I guess. Stealing the show and stealing our show. So we had a three-star show this week. I think that's worthy of a three and a half, but you know, what do I know? That was pretty good. Three and a half, oh, that's actually a bit of a surprise. Considering I don't think JBL and Mr. Kennedy I don't think their popularity is that high. Because one's what? One's a 72, one's a 79, but that pulled in three and a half stars. And that's only the first the first week of the rivalry, so. Wait a minute, what the heck? Did I, did I never make the rivalry? You've gotta be kidding me. Ah! I'm so disappointed. Well, that's just great. Because that was, that was supposed to start. I don't know why, how I forgot. Ah! Okay, I guess. Yeah, because I, I had it all planned down. I was going to do Battle of the Titans. Ah! I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm so disappointed in myself. But, uh. I know a lot of people want to see Carlito and Kane, former tag team. And I would like to see that too. I was really hoping Finley would pull out the win. Uh, last time around, but that unfortunately was not the case. What I think I could do in the interim though, let's make a rivalry between Finley and Mick Foley because you've got Mick Foley, the hardcore icon, and then you have, you have Finley, the guy who loves to fight. So we'll make it an ungrateful rookie storyline because I don't think I have anything more high profile than that. Uh, GM Kiss Up is also a, a two star. Uh, yeah, because Foley's not considered a legend in this game. If I had Mankind or somebody else, he would be, but 
not regular old McFoley. I don't think David versus yeah. Because Finley's not a cruiserweight in this game. No, that's not till that's not till 2008 that that was the case. Let's take a look at our morale. Guerrero once a oh losing matches. Yes, yeah, so and now he's now he's tired of losing matches. Well, yeah, he he really does need a win. His popularity has dropped significantly. Finley wants a title shot. Well, I mean, I'm I'm working I'm working on getting you there, Finley. I'm I'm, I'm trying trying to give you the the wins. What full what you were just the champ. Get out of here. You know, I might I might have to trade Foley out next cuz he's been a real thorn in my side as of late. Yeah, I knew that Batista wanted to win. Uh yeah, Batista really needed a win actually. And then we have other guys who want title shots. But yeah, a lot of those matches were to try to fix some losing situations cuz I think Triple H had been on a losing streak. Okay, maybe not. But Undertaker wasn't. I know guys like Kurt Angle, John Cena were on losing streaks, so it was just a matter of fixing all of them. Just trying to right, right the ship. This is what we're looking at right now. I really think that the women's division could work better in SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 because I would I would obviously try to draft everybody because their popularity would be within my range. But I haven't I haven't really decided what I want to do yet, because there are a lot of superstars who are who usually don't get used, who are below the popularity threshold that I'm looking at. Chavo Guerrero, still the world champ. He's still hanging in there. I don't know how. John Cena moving up to number six. Edge is starting starting to build momentum. Kurt Angle moving up as well. Foley dropping down, which I do not mind at all. I kind of want to get him out of the WWE title picture. Rey Mysterio moving up. Benjamin moving up. Batista Guerrero going down. JBL going up. Eminem went up. And Kane went down. So actually, let's take a look at how Guerrero has been doing. From 15, from 14, from 11, from number 4. So yeah, Guerrero really has fallen off his pedestal. From 4 all the way down to 18. Gonna have to try to fix that here shortly. You know, I'd be perfectly fine if Guerrero could go on a massive winning streak and Foley on a massive losing streak. Uh, but I, I would like to have Foley's popularity pretty high up there for the trade benefits. Yeah, so Kennedy fell off the list in favor of Matt Hardy. So Hardy can get his title shot. We just can't quite get Finley there yet. I don't really know who... Because if I take a look at... the No, I don't want the news. I've already read that. So let's go back. I wanted to check the trades to see who I could potentially get from SmackDown. Who'd be... See, uh, maybe Big Show, because Big Show's not in the next game. So I'd be okay with getting him. Chavo is their most popular superstar. I have seen it all, folks. Uh, I mean, I could pick up Van Dam again. I guess that's a possibility. Uh, I did Bret Hart last year, so not really looking for that. Flair, maybe, but he'll be in next year's game. I could probably get him there. Booker T, I guess, is a possibility. Yeah, there aren't there aren't many here. I guess someone suggested Umaga. That I guess is also a possibility. Uh, but I, I still want to get Hardcore Holly on the roster. I just haven't haven't had the chance to do so as of yet. But uh, I think we're gonna call it an episode. I will catch you guys next time with more Monday Night Raw. And until then, keep on YouTubing.